How we're going to review The Lobster, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, a dark dramedy that's set in an English society where those who are single are enforced to check themselves into a singles hotel where they are given 45 days to find a romantic partner with similar defining characteristics. However, those who fail at doing so will be transformed into an animal of their choosing. The Lobster is among the films that were nominated for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, however, it did win the grand prize at Cannes. And The Lobster stars Colin Farrell, who plays David, who is among the people who were taken to the hotel. And the reason why the movie is titled The Lobster is because that is the animal he chose, because of reasons being that they live long lives, they stay fertile up until death, and they're blue-blooded like aristocrats. Needless to say, it's a pretty absurd concept, mostly because of our somewhat absurd view on relationships romance. Now, of course, biology does have a huge influence on attraction and the desire to be sexually active. But how much of that is really biological and how much of that is it of the individual trying to find somebody to connect with? In other words, in search of the old L-O-V-E. And the movie poses many questions regarding that. And another question similar to the last one is how much of it is biology and how much of it is actually external factors such as society and culture. The need to continuously be in romantic relationships is very much harpooned in our heads as if not being in one makes you somehow incomplete. So much so, and the movie does explore this, to the person may find his or herself in a completely empty relationship. Or being in a relationship that is just purely abusive. And I'm not talking about something that is rooted deep in psychology. I'm just talking about sort of having somebody check in that box. There's one scene in particular that takes place in a mall that features security officers getting on people's asses who are there shopping solo because in this world it is illegal to be without another. And it's funny and relevant because it is almost as if we do treat it like that, as if it's somehow so wrong to be single. It's as if being alone means that you are unhappy, you are unattractive, you are a pathetic sack of crap loser, while being in a relationship means that you are happy, you are very much attractive, and you are successful. And again, it doesn't matter if you're in a superficial relationship or not, just as long as you're in one. And in my opinion, this is a great piece of satire. Though that's not to say that the movie is just completely chastising the idea of love, it's more or less chastising our just overwhelming emphasis on the whole thing. Because humans, in a general sense, are sociable beings, and therefore we do have that desire to connect, to be loved, and to love another. That does does grant a form of happiness or self-fulfillment. However, if you don't, that doesn't mean you're going to be transformed into a fucking lobster or something. Now, one thing that I haven't really been talking about is the film itself, and although everything I've said definitely coincides with the film and my thoughts of the film, I do want to talk about the actual film, starting with the world. As I've already stated, it is illegal to be without a partner in this world. It doesn't matter if the person died or maybe the two of you broke apart. If you are single, you have to check yourself into the hotel where you are given, again, 45 days to basically find another mate. However, you are granted more days if you are successful at killing the loners who live in the woods. These are basically the rebels, you know, the people who have rejected the whole relationship thing. And when killing the loners in the woods, they are brought back to the hotel where they are later transformed into animals. I told you this movie was kind of absurd. And as a side note, just like society, which is in its own realm of extreme, the loners, they have their own extreme ways as well. These people, led by Leah Sadu, who you may know from Blue is the Woman's Color, are people who have rejected all forms of affection, so much so till like, you'll be punished in very horrible, gruesome ways if you step out of line. One thing that I must mention, and if I haven't already put you off of this film already, I'm probably about to, and that is the characters in this film, they're very deadpan and they deliver their lines as if it's very matter of fact. Most of the time, stuff like that tends to bother me, but good news is that this movie is a comedy, and if anything, it actually adds to the comedy. And this film is very much funny. Some of it is relatively innocent, while some of it is just kind of dark and twisted. And Another thing that I gotta mention is that the acting is pretty well on point in this film. I already mentioned Leah Sadu and Colin Farrell, though I did not mention that Colin Farrell gained what looked to be a decent amount of weight for the role. You also have Ben Wishaw, Rachel Wise, and even John C. Riley. As for any last statements, the cinematography is relatively simple, yet incredibly gorgeous. Also, I have two slight problems. As much as I like the various music that is in the film, there is one track that I did think was a little too overused. You'll know what I'm talking about if you watch the film. And within the last 20 minutes, I did experience a slight lull. But other than that, that's it. Before I give my rating, I do want to say this. Although The Lobster isn't introducing an idea that is completely foreign, 
It's still relatively profound in my opinion. This is the kind of film that will make you think and make you reinforce what you already know. This is the kind of film that can spark some very much in-depth conversation that exceeds just mere symbolism. So with all that said, I'm going to give The Lobster a very light four and a half out of five. So far, The Lobster is my favorite movie of the year. Hell, it's definitely the most intelligent movie that I've seen so far this year. But anyway, if you're somebody who has seen The Lobster, then do let me know your thoughts on it. And as always, I'm Colin Kirkland, and thank you so much for watching.